It came from a special that our specials unit did called The Homecoming. And uh, we did it, I believe, that Henry Fonda was, uh, I think he was in it, but, uh, and was very successful. And, the, you know, we looked at the elements. I know Richard Thomas was in it. He said, you know, we ought to develop some scripts based on this idea just to have in our back pocket for scheduling. And we developed, uh, my wife actually made that suggestion. So we developed four one-hour scripts, and they were great. Earl Hamner wrote all, all the scripts. Uh, and then we went into scheduling. Paley loved that show. I mean, he just thought it was the best show he's ever seen. And, uh, and we got to, we set the schedule, and the last time period that we got to was 8 o'clock Thursday night, which was the bane of everybody's existence in those days. Because you had uh, ABC, I think, had the Mod Squad in there, and NBC had Flip Wilson, which was the number one show in the country. I mean, it, Flip Wilson was hot as a pistol, you know, and, and we were just dying in that time period. And we had nothing to put in there. You know, in the past, we put stuff like Bearcats, real crap, me and the chimp, you know, you name it. One, one dog worse than the other. And... Uh, and I, the subject of, uh, of homecoming came up, said, you know, we ought to, we, wouldn't it be nice to at least die with some dignity? You know, we're not going to do anything in the time period, but what a wonderful show this would be. All we have to do is recast Henry Fonda. You know, the rest of the cast is pretty much uh, the way it is. Uh, and uh, it was a good idea to do that. And uh, we ended up putting uh, the show in there retitled only get the Waltons. Uh, you know, the, the affiliates, when we had the affiliates meeting, we got to this time period, they actually laughed out loud. You know, the idea of going against Flip Wilson with this sweet little show you know, about a bunch of destitute people in Appalachia. You know, they said, what are you, crazy? What are you doing here? You know, and it was, it was tough to hang on to our clearances in that time period. They really wanted to preempt it. But somehow or other, we got it on the air and... Uh, it just over a period of time, just brick by brick, just share point by share point, it, uh, by the end of the television, of the first television season, it, we destroyed Flip Wilson and it was the number one show in the country. And that was ama an amazing story because nobody ever expected it. I didn't expect it. Talk about that process. How do you go into a very competitive time period with a show like this that you just believe in creatively you put it in it there knowing full well that it's going to, it probably is not going to work. It's going to die on it. But you have nothing better to put in, and at least you're going to go out in some style. You're going to, it just was such a good show. It was so well made. And, uh, but what happened, what we didn't bargain on, is that it struck a chord. Kids loved it. Families would sit down together and watch it. All of a sudden, people living in big, bustling cities would yearn for the good old days. You know, different people took different things out of the show. And, uh, and it always made you cry. I mean, it was just such a wonderful, it was a great viewing experience. And, uh, and it was a phenomenon. I mean, that show was number one for three or four years. It's the number one show in the country, which tells you you have... 8 o'clock uh, Thursday, The Waltons, 8 o'clock Saturday, All in the Family. You know, two shows that at face value are very different. Yet they both kind of, uh, you know, they talk about the sanctity of the family and how important it is, each in their own way. But uh, The Waltons was a pleasant surprise. And anybody who says that we expected it is full of baloney.